We have two snake-like filaments on the earth-facing disc. One of them has already erupted, and it looks like the other one is just about to. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely getting a bit exciting. Right now, we're already in the middle of some fast solar wind that has bumped us up to storm levels multiple times and has brought some gorgeous aurora to many parts of the world. But believe it or not, that's not the only story. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone right now. That's the coronal hole that's been sending us some fast solar wind, and it will continue to do so here over the next couple days before it settles down. But take a look at the east limb of the sun. Do you see all those bright regions? And if you look closely, do you see those little snake-like filaments up there? Oh my goodness, on the 31st, the one that's furthest to the east, whammo, do you see that it launches as a solar storm and it looks like it's gonna head toward the stereo spacecraft, but we're paying attention to it. And because it launched, it looks like it destabilized this other one that's in the middle of the Earth-facing disk right now. And if that one goes, it sure could be Earth-directed. Now switching to our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A and it's looking Looking at the sun pretty much from the side. On the 31st, if you look in the north, whoosh, do you see that? Now that's the filament eruption that we saw on the front sided sun, but it's headed far more towards stereo, so we got a better look at it. And if that solar storm passes over stereo, which it probably will over the next couple days, we'll get a nice heads up to know how strong these solar storms might be, especially with that one filament that has yet to erupt that might actually launch toward Earth if it does erupt, so that's a good heads up for us. Meanwhile, in the southern hemisphere, you can see a couple bright regions that are rotating into stereo's view. Those regions will also rotate into Earth view here in about three to four days, and they could boost the solar flux and uh, help emergency communications and amateur radio operators. Now switching to our coronagraph view, this is LASCO and it's a coronagraph view looking from Earth's point of view. And what we do is we make a false eclipse in the sky. And you can see the sun right there on the 31st, that sun launches that little filament and you can see it kind of moving out in the solar atmosphere of the LASCO instrument. Look at moving out to the east like that. It doesn't make a halo. That means it isn't like wrapping around the sun. It definitely looks like it's moving off to the east so we know that it's headed more toward the stereo spacecraft and not towards Earth. But as that thing hits stereo, as I mentioned before, it could give us a decent heads up because remember, we still have one more filament and that one, if it launches, could be Earth directed. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we switch to our low energy particle environment, these are the particles that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft, including charging up the solar panels that then can discharge and cause electrical short circuits. We do see that we had a little bit of flux build up in and around the geo orbits right around the 28th, but it got flushed reasonably quickly. This was when that fast solar wind hit and it managed to flush everything and it took a little while for fluxes to begin to build up again, but oh my goodness, as we began to move into the 29th and into the 30th, you can see those fluxes have really begun to build up at GEO. And now as we've moved into the 31st, we are definitely dealing with some serious surface charging issues for you uh, satellite operators in GEO, especially in the, the near midnight and pre-dawn sectors. So just be aware, these issues are likely going to continue for you over the next maybe two or three days before things begin to calm down. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon on our way to a third quarter, and by September 6th, the moon will still be about 87% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, you're going to have to continue to deal with this bright companion if you want to check out those dim objects in the sky, so please check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are continuing to be hit by that fast solar wind from the coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So we're going to continue to expect to get a little bit more storming before things calm down. Now at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. So this is really giving some good shows of aurora at high latitudes. Now at mid latitudes, we're still expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10 to 15% chance of a minor storm. So you mid-latitude aurora photographers, you know, this you, there is a chance of these things brightening a bit, so you can catch a show, but you're going to have to be pretty patient. 
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless disk right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. On Earth's day side, we have pretty good GPS reception right now. I'm not quite so sure about the Earth's night side right now with the fast solar wind. That could be a problem for you, but at least the day side's pretty good. Now, we also have solar flux hanging on to the low 70s. We are just barely at the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that's probably getting messed up a little bit by that fast solar wind, especially on Earth's night side. You're going to expect some sporadic disruptions easily over the next couple days, but at least we are managing to hang on to that low 70s, and we do have some bright regions rotating into Earth view here over the next probably three or four days, and that could boost that uh, radio propagation back up a bit. So just hang in there, and we'll we'll get through this. Now also be because we are still climbing out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over eight hours, 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely getting exciting. We're in the middle of some fast solar wind right now that has bumped us up to storm levels and could easily do so again. So your aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, of course you're getting a wonderful show. But if you're at mid latitudes, well, you know, as long as you're dedicated, you could catch some of these intensifications, but you gotta be willing to wait for those substorms. So take advantage of them. Now we also have on top of that, a filament eruption that launched toward the stereo spacecraft. Now this one isn't Earth directed, but it, you know what? It looks like it's destabilized the other filament that if it launched could actually send us an earth directed solar storm. So yet another chance for Aurora. So we're going to be watching that quite closely. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Well, you know, this fast solar wind is sure messing things up, but on earth's night side for you, I bet. Now on earth's day side, you should be getting some marginal radio propagation, but on earth's night side, you're just going to have to wait for a few days for this solar storm to kind of calm down. But we do have a reprieve because we do have some bright regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days, and that could boost that solar flux up for you a bit and improve that radio propagation. So just hang in there. I promise things will get better. Now, also, you GPS users, well, you know what? GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty nice. You shouldn't have any issues, but man, again, that fast solar wind on the Earth's night side, that could definitely be messing you up a little bit. So as long as you stay away from Aurora and away from those Dawn Dust Terminators, your GPS reception should hang in there. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.